Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we are going to be talking about ADHD. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Now, with that being said, let's discuss hyper attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. ADHD is a disorder that makes it difficult for a lot of people to pay attention and to control their impulsive behaviors. That is probably the two most important parts about ADHD. So if you can remember anything, remember that they have an attention problem and they have an hyperactivity issue. And that is also in the name, ADHD. Now, hyperactivity is actually the hallmark of the disease, and that's very important to understand. Patients who have ADHD are also are often very hyperactive. They often have to they are often have to get up and move around. They often have to fidget with their hands or their legs are usually shaking, and that type of hyperactivity is a very common manifestation of ADHD. In addition, patients with ADHD also have poor impulse control. So you may have a patient with ADHD who is constantly eating because they have that poor impulse control. They see food and they just want to eat it. They can also have impaired social and school functioning. Now, a lot of times when people hear impaired school functioning, they think that someone with ADHD may have a low IQ. But the truth is that's actually not the case. ADHD people, people with ADHD actually have normal intelligence. So these students are normal IQ, they have normal intelligence, they actually do good on tests. But the problem is they struggle to pay attention in class and because they struggle to pay attention they get in trouble and that can impair their school functioning. So that's why they actually struggle in school. Now the way I think about ADHD at the end of the day is this gift right here that sums it up. This little girl right here, this super hyper girl reminds me of someone who has ADHD. Now as far as ADHD is concerned, <laughs> I forgot I put this gift in there. Yeah, this is another hyper ass kid. Anyways, as far as ADHD is concerned, the cause is unknown. We don't know why uh, patients actually develop ADHD and what's going on. The diagnostic criteria for ADHD is pretty important and I think you should understand this because you will definitely be diagnosing patients with ADHD at some point in your career. Patients who have ADHD who are presenting must have symptoms that have been present before for age 12 and the reason why that's important is because a lot of times patients will present saying that they have symptoms of ADHD in order to maybe get the drugs that are stimulants or to use the drugs because they're addicted or they just want to use them for a study aid and they don't actually have ADHD. The, the symptoms must be present before age of age 12. The symptoms must be present for at least six months and they must be present in at least two different settings. So that means they must be present at the home or at school or at home or at work or you know somewhere else. But they may they must be present in at least two different settings. Epidemiology wise, ADHD is four times dang, four times more common in males. That sucks for me. Uh, because then you know I'm more susceptible to ADHD. Uh, and patients will mostly present around age 6 to 12. So that's the typical presentation range. And ADHD will often persist into childhood. It, there is no definitive cure for ADHD because it does not go away. However, we do have certain types of treatment, treatments for ADHD. Now these treatments include cognitive, uh, sorry, conditioning, such as be uh, classical conditioning or operant conditioning, training someone to not be hyperactive by giving them rewards or by punishing them. Uh, you could do behavioral therapy as well. However, the, the efficacy and the success rate of this is kind of low compared to medications, okay? Medications are very helpful for patients with ADHD. And you have three main classes of medications when you are treating patients with ADHD. You have stimulants, you have non-stimulants, and you have alpha-2 agonists. And we're going to start talking about these from now on. And we're going to dive deeper into this. So let's start talking about medications and specifically ADHD stimulants. Now, the whole purpose of stimulants in ADHD are to increase CNN dop CNS dopamine and norepinephrine activity. That is the whole purpose of stimulants. So keep that in mind. Stimulants equals norepinephrine plus dopamine and increase norepinephrine and, and dopamine. Okay. And the way it does that is by having the hyperactivity persist, but 
through a external chemical pathway, i.e. the medication. So the mechanism of action of ADHD is such that a, a person will be hyperactive in order to cause an increase in CNS dopamine and norepinephrine levels. Now, because they're hyperactive, that is causing you know, the increase. Now, if you supplement the increase in dopamine via a external medication pathway, if you give medication that causes an increase in norepinephrine dopamine, well, at the end of the day, uh, the patient will have no need to actually be hyperactive because they're being stimulated through the medication. That's pretty much the whole concept of ADHD medication stimulants. Now, stimulants are going to improve ADHD symptoms. And like I said, ADHD children are stimulated by hyperactivity and the medication will provide a stimulation so that they don't have to be hyperactive. As far as medications are concerned, there are three main stimulants you should be aware of. The first one is methylphenidate, also known as Ritalin, amphetamine, also known as Adderall, and dexamethylphenidate, which is Focalin. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this, especially going through college. A lot of people are on Adderall, a lot of people are on Ritalin in order to help them focus because the stimulants, it has the same effect as caffeine in a sense, but you know, a very high as dose. Now, the mechanism of action of stimulants is that they block the reuptake of dopamine and serotonin. That's very, very important. And because of this, you're gonna have an increase in dopamine and norepinephrine activity in the central nervous system. Now, some evidence also suggests that um, they can release, they can induce the release of CNS hormones. However, the main mechanism of action you should be aware of is blocking the reuptake of dopamine and serotonin. That is what stimulants mainly do, and that's probably what's going to be tested. Now, as far as uh, adverse effects, you have loss of appetite, which is eventually going to cause weight loss. Uh, you can have insomnia because keep in mind, this is a stimulant that keeps the person going, keeps their mind going, and therefore they may experience insomnia and also abuse. Now, this is very, very important because a lot of people may present for ADHD simply because they want this medication to abuse it. So just keep that in mind. Now, in order to treat ADHD with a non-stimulant way, you can use the drug atomoxetine. Atomoxetine is a non-stimulant first-line treatment for ADHD. And the, the benefits of atomoxetine is that it causes less insomnia and loss of appetite. Think about it. It's not a stimulant. And the stimulant is the main reason you have insomnia, you have loss of appetite, and you have, de and you have increased weight loss. The way this works, atomoxetine, is by a selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Now, whereas stimulants uh, worked with dopamine and serotonin, stimulants did dopamine, let's write that down, dopamine plus serotonin, okay? Non-stimulants like atomoxetine, atomoxetine, attaboy! Uh, atomoxetine is gonna inhibit norepinephrine okay that's the important part to understand that's what it's gonna inhibit now because there is no direct effect on CNS dopamine system you are not gonna have an abuse potential with atomoxetine and that's another benefit because dop the dopaminergic effects of stimulants cause the euphoria which increases the likelihood of having someone abuse stimulants. Well, with atomoxetine, you're not affecting the dopamine system at all. You have no dopamine activity, therefore you have no abuse potential with atomoxetine. So not only is it a non-stimulant first line treatment for ADHD, it also has a, a very low abuse potential. Now finally, the last classification of ADHD medication are the alpha-2 agonists, excuse me, the alpha-2 agonists. And there are two main drugs in this class. The first one is clonidine, which is a old hypertensive medication. And the key thing you want to understand is that they have very high rates of sedation. So this is not something you want to prescribe without considering uh, the side effect. 
And finally, you also have uh, guanfacine, which is a second line treatment. This is not first line, this is second line. And the mechanism of action is it activates alpha-2 receptors in the prefrontal cortex to increase the activity of the brain. And this actually ends up helping with the regulation of attention and behavior. Now just to recap, ADHD medications, you have stimulants in which you have methylphenidate, you have amphetamine, and you have, uh, and you have dexamethylphenidate. In the non-stimulant category, you have atomoxetine, and finally in the alpha-2 agonist category, you have clonidine and guanfacine. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have covered ADHD completely. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we post a new video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys back here real soon.